do not get it twisted, all right? You may not be thinking of yourself as a consultant, but you are if you are providing a service or selling your expertise, or you know something better or have a skill set about something better than everybody else, and you want people to pay you for that skill set. Travel agents, plumbers, business consultants, all of those folks are a consultant, and that could mean you too. And if you are starting that type of business, there are a few steps that might be a little different than starting other kinds of businesses. Well, today, my love, I am going to tell you what those steps are, how you can truly start a consulting business. Let's get to work. C -P -C -P. If you're watching this, you're probably thinking about starting your own consulting business. And that's an exciting step and you're in the right place. Because today I am breaking down the critical steps that you need to take before you dive into the world of consulting entrepreneurship. These steps are designed to save you time, frustration, money, and headaches. So let's get to work. So step number one in starting this consulting business is truly laying the groundwork. Now in this step, you are gonna be focused primarily on idea generation, figuring out exactly what your skills are, what your passion is, what your expertise is so that you know what services you're delivering. You're gonna do your research and identify where your niche market is. You're gonna do your market research. You are ultimately going to figure out what you're going to be spending specializing in because everything about being a consultant is about being an expert and expertise comes with specialization. It is absolutely key in consulting. You are a high ticket provider and with high ticket needs to be expertise. And I use this analogy all the time and I want you to make sure that you're keeping this in mind as you are creating this idea and identifying where you fit. Doctors all make great money. Hey, that's pretty good. It's true, but there is a difference between a cardiologist and a neurologist versus a general practitioner. They make very different money, right? Eventually, your general practitioner will say, I've got to send you to a specialist. And you, as a consultant, want to be a specialist. That is when you can charge high ticket dollars for your expertise. You are literally in this phase figuring out what that expertise is, and you're figuring out what your passion is and you're figuring out where you fit into the market and exactly what niche or sub niche you are in. And in order to do that, you got to generate a good idea. You got to figure out where it ties into who you are that you can really deliver on, where your skills are, where your expertise is, what the market dictates, figuring out your niche, and then ultimately doing your market research. So big, big, big part of this particular stage, understanding your market, who are your potential clients? What competition will you face? This research will help you refine your offerings and ultimately set very competitive rates. And that is laying the groundwork in starting your consulting business. Now, also in this phase, you are going to set up your business structure, right? You're gonna figure out your name and your LLC and your tax ID and your business bank account and setting up your financial structure and your address and your email. You're creating all of those things and laying the ground groundwork. You're figuring out your niche and your market research, and that is all about the foundation. So that is step number one. It's a lot of work involved. And it feels like you're doing a lot of work without a whole lot of return because you're not quite selling yet, right? There will be opportunities that will still present themselves to you because you're an expert. But ultimately, that very first step is laying that foundation and that groundwork. And that's where I want you to stay focused right now as you begin to build your consulting business. Now, step number two in building your consulting business is to establish your business structure. And in this piece, it includes your business plan, which is more critical, I think, for consultants than any other type of business. You've got to develop that comprehensive business plan, outline your business goals, your strategy, um, your budget, your pricing structure, your operations, how you're going to deliver the services, what your sales process is going to look like, getting all of those marketing materials and your online presence together. Um, and then also making sure that your basic business structure is in place, like that LLC, like your name, like your registrations, and then also, most importantly, your financial infrastructure. Consultants need to be able to invoice 
Very much so. Um, it is not a product-based business. And sometimes I'm working with consultants that will say, well, can I just put my services on my website and just have people pay and then they can come? You're not selling a product. You are selling a high ticket expertise. And most people are not going to just pull out their credit card, especially if you are B2B, which most consultants are working with business owners or someone who owns a business or is in a corporate environment of some kind. And they're not gonna just pull out their credit card and go to a website and hit put something in a cart and pay. So you are most likely infrastructure wise going to be into invoicing. And that process of what that looks like is very important for you to lay out because invoicing requires you to be able to understand your financial projections a little bit better because your cash flow is going to be affected by that invoicing structure. Like if I submit an invoice, my clients have due dates, but very rarely do they pay on time because they are businesses and most businesses work in this net 30, net 45 way of thinking. And so you've got to make sure that your cash flow and your financial projections are at, at a point where you understand them and can mitigate those risks. And that comes from ultimately creating that structure and that business plan for you to be able to understand what's happening. Now, obviously I can't get into all the nitty gritty of everything that I'm talking to you about now, but I do get into all the details and all the nitty gritties and every single step, step by step in my free masterclass. It is called the five steps ultimate guide to starting a business masterclass. And it is absolutely free. It is truly a training that will take you to that next level and really give you that sense of understanding as you begin to embark on starting this consulting business. So I want you to make sure that you check out the link in the description below, click on that link and it's gonna take you automatically to the masterclass. You can watch it immediately or you can schedule a time to watch it. It's totally up to you and put it in your calendar, but it's really gonna give you the nitty gritty and break down everything that I'm saying to you now into a step-by-step -step in order process for you to start this business. And while you're down there, make Make sure that if you are getting value out of what I am telling you, that you like this video, that you subscribe, that you leave me a comment, what type of consulting business that you are thinking about starting, um, what your questions are about starting, what challenges or frustrations or pain points that I might be able to help you with. And then also share this video with other consultants that you may know that want to move forward on their own with that expertise. Now, step number three is launching and growing your business. Now, obviously those two things happen in phases. All of the things that I'm telling you happen in phases, but I wanted to kind of give you um, three easy steps that you could grab hold onto. And I know I can't get into real nitty gritty detail here on YouTube because the video would just be too long. But again, tap into that masterclass that I mentioned. But launching and growing your business is kind of this next big thing. Um, now that you're set up, right, you've gone through the research search, you've set up the business structure, it's time to launch and it's time for your growth plan. It's time to figure out what you've got to do in order to add clients. Launching and execution is all about getting your first clients and generating leads into your business. And so you spend a lot of time in this step creating a lead generation strategy. What are going to be the marketing channels that you're going to use in your consulting practice in order to have leads come to you? And then also, what are you going to do to go out there and get leads? Oftentimes, this is where consultants specifically, service providers specifically, get very, very frustrated with this whole entrepreneurial thing because you're in this mindset where you're like, okay, I'm not getting any customers or clients and you've done all the other stuff, but you don't know how to get customers and clients. And this is a big piece of launching, right? Going out, getting your first few customers and clients and ultimately driving leads into your business at a consistent rate where you can convert some, not convert some and still have a good solid revenue stream. And so that's all a part of this step launching it, getting your first few customers, and then continuing to grow it by, by bringing in additional leads. So key points that I want you to consider in this step. Number one, you have got to make sure that you have got your online presence built. And that means your website has to be very professional. Everything has to be good when you are a consultant. It cannot be half-ass at all because you're high ticket, 
um, and people are paying you for expertise. And so they have certain amounts of expectations. And just going back to that example that I gave you in the very beginning around the specialist, like the cardiologist and the neurologist versus the general practitioner, just imagine being in the hospital and having a doctor walk in that was all dirty and covered in dust or wearing a leather jacket and, you know, looking around like they didn't even know what was going on. How confident would you be in, in having them care for you or provide you with an expertise, right? Hello, sick people and their loved ones. In the interest of saving time and avoiding a lot of boring chit chat later, I'm Dr. Gregory House. You wouldn't be confident at all. And it's the same thing for you. You have a higher level of professionalism that you must maintain. And that professionalism must be evident in your online presence. That includes your website. So you've got to have a professional looking one, um, which is oftentimes why I recommend, especially for my consultants, that you actually invest in outsourcing that and having a professional web person do it. I have done it before, so I'm not going to even lie. I'm being completely transparent here, y'all. I have built my own websites in the past, but it definitely wasn't my first business that I built it for. It was after... I'm kind of a person that can watch somebody do something and learn how to do it. And so it must have been maybe my third business where I actually like just put up my own website. And, and I still ended up within six months of actually having a professional do it. But it was a nice little you know, kind of whole placeholder for me in order to be able to really start to launch and go out there because, you know, in the beginning I was like, I don't know if I have the money to be able to hire somebody to do it. So it's okay if you've got a placeholder. That's not what I'm saying. And you, there's a lot of, of sites out there where you can put a good placeholder in place and it can still look really professional that you can try and, and DIY. But I definitely recommend that you wrap your mind around the fact that your initial website, even if you do do it, even if it is DIY, eventually within a year, you're gonna have to have it redone. And then also making sure that you have established your social media um, presence. And you're gonna need to know in this, which social media platform you need to be on, depending upon who your target customer is. And that you should know from, from step number one, okay? So if you don't know, then you gotta go back to step number one. Before you create this website and before you do this online social media presence, you've got to get that done in step one. Um, again, check out my masterclass. I dive a lot more deeply into all of these steps. Um, but there are definitely some essential tools around your web and online presence that you've gotta make sure you have. You also need to begin to dive very seriously into networking and building relationships. Um, a large part of consulting businesses and, and consulting organizations that are successful, a large part of your marketing strategy and your lead generation strategy will include offline face-to-face -face marketing. And that typically comes from building relationships, becoming a part of organizations that specialize in your industry, in your niche, and with your audience, and getting out there and networking. When I was building my first consulting business, I made it a goal that I did at least one networking event um, or one organizational type of event a week. So every single week, I was out there meeting people. And I had to create an entire process, a lead gen process around that networking schedule. You have to do that as well. Trust me, a lot of your leads. Now, my consulting practice, 100% um, of my leads in my consulting practice come from referrals, come from networking, come from my involvement in the community. And I literally will get two or three leads sent to me on a weekly basis. And so I don't really have to go out and, and find them anymore, right? And that's because from the very beginning, Networking and building relationships was a huge part of this step, launching and growing my business. And then you also wanna make sure that in this step, the key point that I wanna make is that um, you're constantly making sure that you are abreast of what's happening in your industry and that you are continuously learning um, and growing in your adaptation of what's happening. People, again, are hiring you for your expertise, and that means that you have to know things that they don't know. And that includes innovations and not being afraid of innovation. And in order for you to know what's coming and to know what those innovations are, you have to continually be learning. The market will evolve and change constantly, and you have to as well in order to stay at the forefront, in order to continue to be at the top of your game in your industry and your market. So stay updated with the latest trends 
in your industry and in and, and your field and be ready to adapt your strategies as necessary and communicate those. So I literally have in my schedule um, every single week a learning hour. I call it my learning power hour. And I make sure that I am spending, and usually on Fridays I do this or sometimes on Mondays because those are my two lightest days from you know appointment heavy things and meeting heavy things. Um, but yeah, I, I do a power hour and I don't care if it's a blog post that I've saved or if it's a webinar that I've scheduled or if it's a workshop that I'm going to attend, at least one hour every single week I've got time to adjust um, and I've got time set aside in order to learn. And that is a huge part of step number three, especially as you embark upon this consulting journey. And so that may be something that you haven't already thought about or considered. Um, I know that I didn't have anybody telling me that that was going to be a big deal for me in the very beginning. And it took me some years to really figure it out. So CP is telling you now, this is a basic part of your starting a business strategy. So incorporate it from the very beginning and you will grow leaps and bounds much faster than I was able to and that you actually think that you can. So again, I want you to dive deep into all of these things. If you really want to know the true steps and dive deep into them, I want you to check out my free masterclass, the five step ultimate roadmap to starting a business. It is an amazing masterclass. It gives you so much. I dive so deep uh, I, I that my team can't even believe that I'm getting it away for free, but I want to make sure that I'm doing that because I know I can't do something of that length here on YouTube and you guys have been asking and requesting it. So make sure that you check out the link in the description below. And those are the critical steps. I mean, I wanted to break it down to at least three of starting your own consulting business. Um, I've been a consultant my entire career. I've had very successful and still do have a very successful consulting business. So I want you to remember that through prep preparation, it is going to be your best friend in this journey, preparing, um, learning, and, and being able to implement. Follow these steps and you will be on your way to consulting business success. And if you found this video helpful, please make sure that you like it, that you share it, that you subscribe because CPTV is all about helping you build as you build your consulting business and grow and start your consulting business. And if you've got questions or if you want, you know, you got concerns or challenges, please leave a comment down below. I will be be happy to answer them, have someone from my team checking on them so that we can ultimately answer them. And until next time, my loves, I will see you very soon. Go out there and make this happen. You got this, my love. Start that consulting business because the world needs your gift. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.